Suppose you tell me how much you know. Miss Ann Collins was dead before the act of double indemnity clause in this policy. You won't find out. You could have saved yourself a trip, for we? Well, I'll tell you when off a canyon road a little after 10 o'clock that. Coroner's report two hours when the accident occurred. This is a blunt instrument. Someone back Just two hours later, that car drops off at his wife. Apparently it wasn't home. He brought her home about 11. That's Jax. Cab picked her, hold them home. She's been into her doctor. We drive over there and see her any time now. Drive over there? Oh, uh, man, it's, that's about five miles nearer them. Only some people live there up the top of Little Canyon. Oh, that's a lot of quick turn for a stern. Uh-huh. Crash, is he the only one who heard of this? That's not too surprising, though. Up the top of the canyon. This Nate did the first turn of the road below Collins. No one lives in between them. After Pinkert, there isn't much rest of the way into Manitou. Pretty the icon road is, but it comes out right on Manitou's main drag. If you know how to handle that road, you could get right in the center of things in three minutes. Suppose we go out there, see Mrs. Collins. You can see the layout yourself. That's fine. Oh, uh, does she know yet that her husband was murdered? Yeah. Doc told her a little while ago. Now, that's where the car went over, over there. Uh-huh. How much of a drop is it? Oh, 40, 50 feet, I guess. They got the car out, though, an hour or so ago. Should have a report on that before too long. That must have been Pinkett's house there at the curve. Yeah, we'll check him after we talk to Mrs. Collins. Look, you see? The way the canyon slopes, you can see the tops of those buildings. Ah, yeah. And they're on the main street we just turned off. That's right. So it isn't as isolated as it looks up here. Well, looks like this is it. Altitude will cut your wind. Oh, I got to live five or ten minutes up here. Never noticed it. Takes a while to get used to it, all right. Yes? Lieutenant Anders, see Mrs. Collins. Oh, sure. Come in. Come in. Uh, this is Mr. Dollar. Hello. I'm How you doing? Ralph Turner, Aunt Delia's nephew. She, uh, she's this way, living here. Aunt Delia. This is Lieutenant... Uh, Lieutenant Anders, Mrs. Collins, Colorado Springs Police. Oh, yes, Lieutenant Anders. And this is Mr. Dollar. He represents your husband's insurance company. I see. Mrs. Collins. Well, sit down, gentlemen. Ralph, please, all of you. Where's your mother, Ralph? I think she's in the kitchen. She thought you ought to try to eat something. Oh, my. Uh, tell her not just yet. Tell her I'd like for her to be here. All right, Aunt Well, no, we... None of us know what to do, you know. It's, it's just unbelievable. I'm well, very sorry, Mr. Thank you. Now, is there some question about the insurance, Mr. Dollar? No, not really, Mrs. Collins. Since the accident wasn't the cause of your husband's death, there's no question about it at all. I'm just here to get a complete report for the company. Well, I know me. It was very prompt about payments. The policy's in order, Mrs. Collins. Oh, this is my sister, Mrs. Turner, Lieutenant Anders, and Mr. Dollar. Oh, how do you do? do. I imagine these gentlemen want to ask some questions, Ada. I wanted you and Ralph here, and since I could get Oh, of course, dear. Anything we can do. You got back to the house at 11 o'clock last night, Mrs. Collins, uh, in a taxi, I understand. That's right. I've been gone all evening. Since, well, it must have been around 7, wasn't it, Ada? Just about exactly 7. You see, our Thursday nights are a regular ritual with us. They always time out just about the same, don't they, Ralph? Yeah, just about. Ada means we do the same thing every Thursday night. She and Ralph call for me about seven. We have dinner in Manitou, we then go over to the spring to the Pueblo to see a movie. I usually get home around 10.30 or 11, depending on when the show is out. All three of you have dinner and see the picture together? Well, no. Ralph usually eats before they pick me up. He's, he's just our chauffeur. Takes us to the restaurant in Manitou. We take a taxi to the springs and taxi back. They drop me on the way. It's cheaper that way. Was your husband home when you left last evening? Yes, he was. He was just finishing his dinner when Ralph came to the door for me. As far as you know, did he have any plans for the evening? No. He usually plans something for Thursdays. Last night, he'd spoken of Mr. Pinkett coming up and then playing cards, but well, for some reason, that was called off. Is your neighbor down the road? Yes. You don't know why their plans were called off? No, I really don't. Maynard was talking to you, Ralph. Did he mention anything? No, he just said Mr. Pinkett said he couldn't make it. He asked me if I could come back. 
told him I was going bowling and he could come with me. He said, no. I sure wish I'd come back now. Well, Ralph and his uncle were devoted to one another. You see, Ralph's father, my husband, passed away some years ago. Maynard's just been wonderful to us both ever since. He sure has. Well, Maynard and I never had any children of our own dependents, so Ralph, of course, was special to both of us. Mrs. Collins, this may be blunt, but I'll have to ask you. Did your husband have any enemies, anyone who might want him out of the way? Why, not that I know of. I just can't imagine anyone not liking Maynard. I suppose that's just nature. Someone killed him. I know. I know. Look, do you have to say things like that? I'm afraid so. Well, that's all right, Ralph. Tennant has every right. I want to help all I can. Mrs. Collins, was your car in front of your house when you left last night? Yes, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Maynard often left it there. Yes, it was there, all right. Parked heading down the canyon. Remember, Ralph? We pulled up just in front of it. Yeah, we did. Was it important where the car was? It was important to the murderer, Mrs. Collins. It must have looked like a cover-up for him. A natural just sitting there in front of the house. Did it happen in the car? We don't know yet. We don't know where it happened. We had men checking outside. Some of them will be coming in here in a while to give the house a going over. Mm -hmm. That, I get report on the car, we should know a lot more. I hope so, Lieutenant. Whoever it was, I, I hope you find him soon. We'll get back to you, Mrs. Collins. We'd appreciate it if you'd stay here together. We may want to talk to you again. We'll be here. You won't leave, Aunt Gibbs. And if you think of anything that might help us, let us know. By the way, Ralph, uh, where do you do your bowling? The Clark Lanes, Manitou. Mm -hmm. I was there. You can check. We will. We did, too. According to the Bowling Alley Reservation Book, Ralph at the third alley from 7.15 to 10.15. A regular Thursday night customer, the owner said. Apparently, the whole family spent their Thursday nights in a prescribed manner, and everyone was properly accounted for between 8 o'clock when Maynard Collins was murdered and a little after 10 when Collins' neighbor, Doug Pinkard, heard the crash. It seemed like a good idea to talk to Pinkard. Nope, it couldn't have been any earlier. I know, because the 10 o'clock news had just come on when I heard the crash. Were you alone when you heard it, Mr. Pinkard? <laughs> I'm a bachelor, Mr. Dollar. Alone a good bit of time. You called off some plans you had last night, Mr. Collins, didn't you? Yes, I did, but what difference does that make? Do you know that Collins was murdered? No, I don't know that. How could he be murdered and go off the road? He'd been dead two hours when that happened. You're sure about the time you heard the crash? I'm positive. Two hours? Well, that would make him dead around eight o'clock. That's right. Does that mean anything to you? No, no it doesn't mean anything to me. You didn't hear anything around 8 o'clock, any commotion or struggle or a car going by or anything? No, not at 8 o'clock. I heard a car around 7, but that was Dealey and then I saw them go. They're regular as clockwork, you know, every Thursday night. And that's the last car you pulled the crash? That's the last one. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the last one. Yeah. You're sure you'd hear a car if it came by this way? Well, I usually do. I don't get a lot of traffic up here, you know. I usually take a look when I hear a car coming. Well, maybe there's another road out of here, is there, Mr. Pinkard? No, nope, this one sort of peters out up above Collins's. The only way to get up to Collins is, is up this road here. How well do you know the Collins? Well enough, I guess. I've been up to his house a lot. Mostly when she isn't there. I always had an idea she didn't care much for me. But then I'm not used to women around. I just don't know how to judge him. You knew Mr. Collins better then? Oh, yes, lots better. And I liked him. I liked him a lot. I, I'm just real sad. Well, did you say they got along all right? You think they were happy together? You, you talked to Dean? Yeah. You talked to her? She said uh, that long on She implied that, but I'm asking you, not her. Well, maybe it is. Like I said, I'm not used to women. I just don't know how to judge them. You don't think they were happy together, Mr. Pinker? Well, maybe they were. I don't think it was serious, though. Sometimes they fought about things. How do you know that? Well, Maynard told me mostly. And then a couple of times I wandered in up there, and they'd be going at it a little, you know. About anything in particular? No, I didn't say so. I don't remember anything in particular. I... Try to stay out of things like that. <laughs> yeah, just get along. Did you ever hear them going at it about money? Oh, I guess, yes. Yes, money. Well, that's all. I, w I was fixing to go for a climb. That's the way I spend most of my time, you know. No reason why I shouldn't go now, is there? Uh, Mr. Pinker, do you have any idea who would kill Mr. Collins? No. I can't think of anyone who did it. <laughs> Somehow I had the idea that Pinkett was ordinarily a man of very few words, that he'd said more in the last ten minutes than he had for the last ten years. But 
You never know. Anders was pretty stumped. I didn't blame him. No scene of the crime, no murder weapon. No one wanted Collins dead. It wasn't going to be easy. Back at headquarters, a new development was waiting for us. His name was Clint Bingham. I run a service station, ran it to. Maynard, uh, Mr. Collins, called me about 7.30 last night. Told me he had a flat tire and wanted me to come change. I was low and had a couple of customers, and they might come up when it goes up for the night, and I did. What time was that? It was right at 8 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Well, I get up there, knock on the door, hike around the house, and he comes to the door. He's gone somewhere, and he'll be back. He's in the car, so I change the tire for the black mark left and move. And so, except, uh, maybe I'm imagining that. What? But, well, it seemed to me I heard something. Something was watching me. It could have been man or something. Maybe I don't know. A bit later, it sounded like something sort of running. Uh, I wouldn't want to say it. Uh, Could you tell what direction the sounds came from? It seemed like it was down there, Pinker. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I don't think much about it. Pinker saw this time. How about that? Yeah, I uh, checked in with you earlier. Only I went hunting early this morning. I got back in. I heard about it. I was uh, just leaving. Anders. Got a couple of things for you, Lieutenant. Looks like Collins was killed with a brush not far from his back door. But it's good, though. How about the weapon? Yeah, they're still looking. They've checked the cars. Nothing there. Uh-huh. Just got a call from the emergency hospital. That fellow Pinker reported the crash. Yeah? He walked in front of a car over in Manager. It's pretty bad shape. We will return to yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. If you're in the market for a Sunday night date, here are a few suggestions. Matter of fact, you needn't take your pick. You can date them all. Marie Wilson and Kathy Lewis on My Friend Irma. Eve Arden as our Miss Brooks. Jerry Livingston on The Jack Benny Show. Briny Tempered Sapphire on Amos and Andy. And Janet Waldo as Corliss Archer. Stay home tomorrow night and date the whole gang over most of these same CBS radio stations. Now with our star Edmund O'Brien, we bring you the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> It was going to be a while before Pinkert would be in condition to talk. According to the driver of the car and witnesses, Pinkert never even looked, just walked out into the path of the car. One of the witnesses, the kid who worked at Clint Bingham's service station, said Pinkert had come in, asked for Clint, and took it very big when he learned he had gone hunting. Finally, Pinkert came around, and Anders and I listened. I knew Kent was up there at Manny's. I heard him come. I'd have told you, too. He just said Manny was murdered. About the time I knew Kent was there. And Kent's a good boy. I wanted to hear him say he was there first. Before I told you. Holding evidence. Sure. No, I don't care if it is. Men don't have too many things. Kent and Manny, you want to kill him? Manny's gone. I can't lose Kent, too. Until I'm sure. Why did you walk in front of the car, Mr. Pinker? Boy, he said he had gone hunting. I was heard maybe a long ago. I didn't want to talk. I didn't see any car. Vince says he heard someone running near your house when he was changing Colin's tire. That you, Pinker? It was not. I never left the house last night. Suppose you did leave the house. Suppose you killed Colin's out behind his house. So Clint came, he interrupted you, so you ran. You knew he might have seen you. So today you had to get to him before he got to us. Why? Why would I kill him? Why would you kill him, Pinker? Ask her, Diva. Ask her what they thought about yesterday. You go all the time. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say that. The doctor motioned the side of the room. Anders wasn't buying the quarrel or anything else much that Pinkett had said. He decided to stay at the hospital until Pinkett could talk again. With his permission, I went back to Delia Collins. She was alone. I sent Val for Ada home. Well, she was afraid of the wreck. I'm stronger now, and the strain has been so much for me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about Mr. Pinkett. Mrs. Collins, he says you and your husband quarreled yesterday. Why? We did. Oh, wasn't quarrel exactly. I had my opinion, and Maynard had his. I'd really forgotten Mr. Pinkett was willing to be happy. 
Doesn't see how it could be important at all now. Anything's have to be. Might be a big help. Well, all right. I'm glad he didn't get up on me. It's better. I'm afraid it would hurt him. Maynard had such plans for Ralph, but he tried to tell me no one could live up to what he expected of us. Ralph's not much of a student, and Maynard was paying his college fees. Yesterday, I guess Maynard went over to talk to the dean. The colleges in town? It was in Springs. Mm -hmm. Maynard said the boy wasn't trying, but the dean didn't think so either. Mm -hmm. Well, I took Ralph's part. I guess I always have. Anyway, Maynard said he told the dean to take the boy out of school and he wasn't putting the bills on him. I must admit, I was very upset. I just don't know half what he said. You remember, did your husband say whether or not he told Ralph? No. Well, he hadn't told him. I begged him not to. He said that was up to the dean. I thought he would not see me down there. Change his mind. <laughs> It didn't seem like much to bother Anders with, not until I knew more. And when I knew more, it wasn't worth it. Dean Michener at the college hadn't told Ralph anything about his uncle's visit the day before. He'd planned to tell him the next morning. But after he heard about the tragedy, he decided the news would keep. I told him where he could reach me, and I rejoined Lieutenant Anders at the hospital. They came up with the murder weapon, found it half buried under some brush. The canyon slopes down toward the main street. See the tire iron. Bingham's? He says it isn't his. Tire irons are pretty much alike. We're checking his prints against those on the iron. I can't figure Bingham showing up like he did. We wouldn't have known he was there if he hadn't told us. He could have thought Pinkert had told us, or that he would. Still don't know anything about the motive. I'm waiting to put the two of them together. Someone's got to give. Pinkert's still in bad shape? Doc says the way to buy. Okay, then. Be right back with you. Thanks, I'll be back to Johnny Dollar. This is Dean Mitchell, Mr. Dollar. Now, this may not be worth anything to you, but I just found out Ralph did know that his uncle was removing him from school. He did? How? Now, my secretary seems to have told him. She was here when Mr. Collins came yesterday. Being a friend of Ralph, she told him late yesterday afternoon. Something about she thought she should warn him. I see. Well, I certainly appreciate your calling me, Dean Mitchell. I'm very upset about this breach of trust, Mr. Dollar. I want you to know that I intend to do something stringent about it. Now, don't be too hard on her, Dean. She may have done us all a favor. And as Ralph did know Collins was taking him out of school, Dean's secretary told him. He did, eh? It's the nearest thing to a motive we've got. Yeah. How about the bowling alley? They are three hours last night. I'd like to check that again, if it's okay with you. Go ahead. I'll try anything. I'll have them picked up and brought here. Sure. I set pins for him. He bowls the alley three times every week. There uh, wasn't anything different about last night? No. Just knocked the pins down. He set them up, same as any other night. And he bowled from 7.15 till 10.15 last night, huh? Well, I'm not sure of the time. The book would show that. Well, that's what the book says. Well, then, uh, did you say 7.15 till 10.15? That's right. Well, I quit before 10 last night. You're sure about that? Sure, I'm sure. I was home by 10, a couple miles from here. And I'll tell you something else. No one bowls on my alley from about quarter to eight to quarter after. That's when I eat my dinner. My alley's closed then. The time's fit. Ralph could have made it up to his uncle's and back while the pin girl was eating the dinner. But if he'd driven up the canyon, Pinkert would have heard him. Maybe he hadn't driven up. Or was that to consider? Lieutenant Anders was considering a lot of things when I got back. Oh, come in, Dollar. Ralph here is beginning to open up a little. He doesn't deny he knew Collins was taking him out of school. Why should I deny it? I mean, he didn't know going to school. Uncle Maynard died in the first place. I'd have to have a better reason than that to kill him. Did you have a better reason, Ralph? I suppose I was bowling last night. You weren't bowling from 7.45 till 8.15 when your uncle was killed. You sure that, Dolly? The tin girl was having a dinner then. Always does, she said. How about that, Ralph? So maybe I wasn't bowling for you. What'd you do in that half hour? I don't know. Nothing important. Did you leave the bowling alley, Ralph? I don't know. Here I have, Lieutenant, the last set of prints checked. Thanks, Sergeant. Thanks very much. These are your prints, Ralph. Murder weapon. I didn't have anything to do with school. I left the bowling alley, Ralph. 
couldn't stand just walking around knowing what I knew. Then I got a hold of it. Back of the car. Back to something heavy and went up there. Walked up. Did you walk past Mr. Pinkett's? Uh, not the road. I climbed the trail. Pinkett always knows what comes in there. I got up to the back door of the house. Just the maid was there in the back porch. I was just crying. Never made a sound. I had gone down the way to I had a car out front. I ran and went back to the train and made it, the road made it. I soon I was back there. But you went back again, didn't you? Yeah. I thought about him and how they'd find it. Maybe even Aunt Billy and Mom. That's when I went back. I remember the car out front. Just a minute. Why'd you do it, Ron? Kindness. It was just kindness. Just being such a generous guy, always paying me bills. Everybody ramming me down my throat all the time. I knew he wasn't so great. I knew about him and women for a long time. Sorry for Aunt Billy, that was wrong. But I found out he was a father and mom. I had to kill him. <laughs> Kyle's mother corroborated his story, and when they got through telling it to the jury, it was a very quick decision for a justifiable homicide. Expense count item two, $175, transportation back to Hartford. The miscellaneous expense account total, $310. Remarks? The company need only pay the straight life value of the policy. The double indemnity clause was never even a factor in the case. In view of the real factors involved, I can wish that Maynard Collins had gone over that canyon in an accident. Would have been cleaner and kinder all the way around. That's true. Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. It stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Kathleen Height with music by Wilbur Hatch. Edmund O'Brien can now be seen starring in the Paramount Pictures Technicolor production. Silver City. Featured in tonight's cast were Ed Begley, Gil Stratton Jr., Jeanette Nolan, Virginia Gregg, Howard McNear, and Hi Everback. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Dan Cumberly inviting you to join us next week at this time when Edmund O'Brien returns as yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Edmund O'Brien again. I'd like to speak to you for a moment about one of the most important duties of American citizens. Today, every American has an opportunity to share in our common defense effort. And right now, this opportunity has become a duty for all of us. The armed forces of the United States need blood, our blood. The Korean campaign has bravely depleted the supply on hand, and this must be replenished if we are to afford our servicemen the protection they are giving us. No matter what your age, sex, or station in life, you can contribute to American defense by donating a pint of your blood to the men of your Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marines. Call your local blood donor center or Red Cross chapter today for an appointment. Remember, your donation of blood may save the life of a wounded service. Give your blood today to save a life tomorrow. <laughs> A little earlier, we mentioned the ladies who will be on CBS Radio tomorrow night. Now, here are the men. My friend Irma shares her lazy boyfriend, Al, with one and all. If you like him older, there is Professor Kropotkin. For a date that's shy, try Mr. Boynton, the object of Eve Arden's affection, as our Miss Brooks. Enjoy the fun with these men on most of these same CBS Radio stations tomorrow night. CBS Radio Network.